One. One, two. Check me out right here, yo. Mike the Truth Jackson here with another episode of Fighters Talk. I'm here with recent retiree, the executioner, Jeff Rexro. Top black security. <laughs> uh, recently, uh, as last week on Inside MMA, uh, you announced your retirement from the sport of mixed martial arts. Uh, what brought this on? First of all, I, w I wouldn't say I've retired from the sport. I would say I've retired from actively fighting. You know, I'm still going to be involved in the sport. It's coaching and, and many other ways. But um, just actively fighting. But there's, there's a, several reasons why. You know, One is, obviously, uh, I just had a second child. My son was born. Um, that adds a little bit of thing. My wife is uh, starting grad school again for her nurse practitioner license. That's another thing that she's going to require a lot of time uh, to do all the scoring. It's a very intensive uh, thing. And, and she sacrificed a lot for me to do what I do on top of my day job. You know, an eight-hour day job and then get ready for a fight and four to five hours a day on top of that between training and traveling to and from training and things like that. And it'd be you know, pretty much impossible for her to do what she really wants to do and what she loves to do. So, you know, all the years that she's done, uh, what she has for me and sacrificed for me, you know, it's, it's, it's only right for me to do the same for her when she's trying to achieve one of her goals. I had to choose, you know, there's only so many hours in a day and between working and being a father and being a husband and fighting. You know, those are, those are pretty easy options for me. You know, I, I've said it from day one, I'm a husband and a father first. Uh, you know, a police officer second, and then a fighter third. You know, it's it's an awesome hobby. It's a great sport. I love it. It keeps me in shape. It keeps my competitive edge going. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still a hobby. You know, I mean, this is not something that I'm looking to make a uh, long-term career out. I'm, I'm, I'm basing my whole life off of whether or not I make it to the UFC. Right. You know, this is just something that I really enjoy doing. I enjoy teaching. I enjoy learning. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, my priorities are, you know, my family first. Uh, Fighting bad guys in the cage, fighting them on the streets, and you see what uh, choice he made. You had all you uh, had seven career uh, fights, all of been with uh, with Legacy. Right. Uh, first of all, how'd you get started in MMA, and why seven fights all with Legacy? Well, I initially got started in 2004 after I got out of the Marine Corps. You know, I, being I spent five about five and a half years in the Marine Corps. And uh, you're, you're tested there physically all the time, you know, whether, you know, you have your mandatory physical fitness training that you have to do, but then also you have a, you know, a whole bunch of jar hits around, and, you know, football games here and, you know, soccer games there, whatever it is, there's always something physical uh, and, and uh, athletic going on. So you have a lot of uh, areas that you can release all that energy, you know, kind of doing that, keep your competitive juices going. Uh, when I got out, I came back to Houston. I started looking for a place to train. I went to a couple of different places before I ended up at Saul's. Um, back then, it was called Patum Wadi. You know, that's before his, my time. Yeah, that was you know back when the gym was behind the Astrodome um, off of Naomi. You know, eventually that gym became Metro Fight Club. Uh, I started with Saul. I spent like six years with Saul, and uh, you know, the, the, the core foundation of my style and uh, how I fight. first fight was, I think, 2007, my first amateur fight, and that was for Lone Star Beatdown with me up in, up in College Station. And, uh, you know, I, that's the first time I really met Mick. He treated us, you know, real nice, uh, real well. And then when I turned pro, you know, Mick, Mick offered me my first pro fight at a pretty, you know, fair, fair pay. And again, going through the process of fighting for Mick and his organization at the time, uh, it was just... You know, a great experience. I enjoyed dealing with him. You know, everything from beginning to end, to getting the fights and the contracts and the pay, and everything was just you know a really good experience. He treats the fighters very well. So um, I kept fighting with him, and then when, especially when he picked up with Access TV, you know, right. you're on national television now. That the show's gotten so big that you know I'm already with an organization that I know treats the fighters very well. And Mick Mick runs the show, and the whole staff at Legacy they run the show extremely well, very smooth. You, can, you know what to expect every time you go there. So there's, there's really just no reason for me to go. And the kind of talent that Mick was trying to bring in for me, you know, whether it's Paul Kelly, you 
you know. Oh uh, man, that could have been the biggest fight of the career right there. That would have been a great fight, but unfortunately for visa issues. And then, you know, replaced him with Efren Escudero. Right. And then, you know, he got picked up again by the UFC. And then uh, all the way up, you know, even Lucas, you know, that's, Lucas was a world class opponent. So I was getting good fights. Um, I was on TV. You know, there really was no better uh, promotion for me to be at than making legacy. Definitely. Uh, over the career, you went six and one for the, the uh, welterweight title. You fought uh, Lucas Pimenta. Right. Uh, in that time, you bestowed upon the world Rex Uh How would you say your popularity has changed? Because it, it garnered so much attention on social media. Uh, do you think, or have you seen a, a notice and change in your popularity with the uh, in Houston and on social media? So. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, first, first of all, I was blown away by. It. The social media thing because I I had been doing that submission for a few years um, already. You know, so to me, it was just another submission. It was okay. just something that I was playing around with, and I figured it out several years ago. And and I've been doing it. So I mean, the guys at the gym they've seen it. And again, it was no big deal. And then uh, when it happened on the fight, and then uh, I get home, and be partying and everything. But the next morning I wake up and it's like a hundred and something messages <laughs> on, on Facebook and my Twitter was like going crazy. I thought my phone was gonna have a heart attack, but um, I didn't understand. I just started looking it up. I'm like, holy cow. And then, you know, you start seeing names like Eddie Bravo right. posting about it and, you know, and, and, and it really took me by surprise. And, um, which was, it was a neat, it was a neat experience to, to be able to share that and uh, to have that. But uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like the amount of people that have followed me on Twitter and, and on Facebook, I mean, I get uh, requests all the time that I have no idea who these people are, where they're from. I mean, from all over the world that, that have requested me, and uh, you know, so that was pretty neat, especially there. And then uh, here locally, I, every once in a while, I have people come up at the fights and be like, "Dude, I tried it, I almost got it, <laughs> you know, I almost got it, you know, or, or you know, then a few people that have gotten it, right? Um, you know, so that's kind of kind of neat to see people getting excited about trying a new move, especially one that you know uh, Eddie Bravo named it, and um, so that, that kind of makes it special too. Now that you're retiring. Uh, you did say that you're going to stay active in the sport itself, coaching. Um, what do you think is the, the thing that you're looking uh, looking forward to most uh, that you're not fighting now? As far as MMA related, anything MMA related, Houston MMA related, whatever. Well, I mean, I'm always I'm always looking forward to seeing my guys improve and, and go out and win. You know, um, some of our up and coming guys, you know, they maybe not have taken the smartest fights for them at their particular stage and, and having gotten the results that we wanted. So we're working towards fixing that, getting them prepared right, and making sure that the matchups that they take are good matchups for them and having some oversight on that. On the top end of our guys, we, you know, we have Brian who's in the UFC and we got a Lester who's a freaking monster, you know, and uh, you know people don't know that yet, but if they haven't already seen it in the last two demolishments he's had for fights. but. Um, you know, I'm really excited to see those guys get better and better and better, but I'm also looking forward to taking these young guys that are raw. Right. They have the talent, you know, to be good, but they just don't have the technique and skill yet. Right. And, and, and watching them grow and get better. So um, that's probably you know, the thing that I'm looking forward to most. Is. What do you think is your greatest accomplishment uh, that you've had this far in the sport? Or your favorite moment in the sport? I don't know. I mean, I'd say. I, Told another guy the same thing. I mean, obviously, it's awesome. Ever since I started, was I wanted to win a title, you know. And, and, and when I first started, Legacy wasn't anything like what it was now. You know, it was still a great show, but it was a small, small show. And I was like, that's fine, I'll take it. But then it blew up into this big thing, and now it's uh, you know broadcast worldwide and everything. So um, that was my goal: was to win, was to win a title, you know, uh, with Legacy. And I managed to get that. So that's obviously a, like top moment for me in, in the career and, and to win against an opponent that's at the level of Lucas, right. you know, 8-0, um, no, Bell Torvet, you know, things like that, and then to win it the way I want it with, you know, the submission, that's obviously uh, up there, but I still, you know, my favorite thing ever for my MMA career is still going to be my fight with Ricardo Talavera because every, every person I fought, um, I think it's still true now, but every person I I fought at the time that I fought them had a winning record. Never fought anybody with a losing record. Everybody I fought is a very talented person. Um, but I never had that one fight where like you really get your limits pushed. Right. You know, until I got to Ricardo. And that was I mean 
a ball buster of a fight. He was a knockdown, drag out. Definitely, slobber, man, that was a fun fight. Slobber man. knocker of a fight. And, um, you know, I think we both came out of that better fighters because we got to push ourselves to that limit, you know, and, and know that it's okay. I can come out the other side of that. I can push this hard. I can survive this. I know what damage I can take, you know, and things like that. So, that, I mean, that fight changed my whole outlook on my skills and my ability to give punishment, take punishment, continue to fight, and things like that. So, I mean, I, I still think my fight with Ricardo is going to be my favorite. Make sure y'all look that up. I'll probably try to find it. Post a link in the I think description. It's on YouTube. And I'll post a link in the description for that fight so y'all can check out the executioner versus the hitman. Uh, and his favorite fight, favorite moment in MMA. Uh, before we get out of here, anybody you want to thank uh, over the, the course of seven fight winning career? Well, there's a, I'll try to keep it short. There's a bunch, but I mean, first and foremost is my wife, you know, because I couldn't have done anything uh, without her. I mean, even though my early career we weren't married yet, but. Um, her her willingness to sacrifice. She knows what it takes in the sport. She's she's an athlete herself. Um, she knows what it takes to, to be good. And she is willing to suffer and sacrifice uh, for me to achieve my goals. Um, so without her, I, you know, I, I kind of kind of done without her. Um, and then obviously, second of all, all my coaches that I've had. You know, even Saul Solis. You know, again, I started the game with Saul. He taught me most of the foundation of what I know to be. MMA and a lot of the stuff that I teach now is all stuff that I learned from him, uh, mixed in with a lot of stuff that I picked up from my newer coaches, you know, Grant, jo uh, Grant Johnson and Igor and all these other guys. Um, you know, so they've helped me a lot in progress. And then also through the years, my main hardcore group of sparring partners that we've been together for years and years and years. You know, you get Ryan Malanson, Mike Brunswillis, Lee King, Tim Snyder. You know. We were all, uh, and then even Lester. Lester came a little bit later, but we've been together for a few years. And I tell you, I don't. Nobody pushes me harder in practice than Lester does. And the guys are beast. And I can't wait to see him get his time to shine in Legacy, which hopefully will be coming up soon here in November. But uh, you know, those are those are all guys that, that really I couldn't have done it without being able to get that good sparring in, the good work to improve the skills. Because you know, nobody in the sport can do it by themselves. Like, you can't you can't train in a garage. And, win a title, you have to have a good group of people supporting you and helping you get to where you need to be, get in shape and learn what you need to learn to, to, uh, to dominate. All right, Jeff Rexro, thank you, my friend. Uh, again, he's just retiring from active fighting. You may see him. Hopefully, we see him sometime in the legacy cage in the future. Give me a job, Mick. <laughs>